Adrian, the Hypermill Max machining process. I've heard so much about it, but this is the first time I've actually seen it. Can you tell us a bit more? Okay, so the Hypermill Max machining comes in three different areas. It starts from drilling, uh, then roughing, and then uh, finishing. And we hear some ridiculous cycle time savings. Can you give me some examples? Yes, yeah, certainly. On these, um, particularly this part you see in the background, um, it has some very flat walls or curved surfaces. Um, now the corner radiuses are very small, which means that typically you would have to machine them with ball mills. In this particular example, we're using uh, a conical barrel tool. This is an open mind, unique speciality. And we're cutting this face, in, you can, as you can see in five axis. Using this tool with a very large radius enables us to have very uh, big step overs. And I can see this is great for aerospace. This could be any number of components, couldn't it? But what other sectors would possibly embrace this? I think anything that you really want to look at, not the, uh, the industry, but the actual, um, the actual surface, so the geometry. So it, anything to start with, anything with a flat face in molten dye or medical, or it could be water pumps, it could be uh, uh, really any, any uh, area. If it's got a flat face, then we could utilize the, the barrel finishing process and uh, machine those surfaces. Some of the strategies look in, you know, incredibly complex. How's the programming? This is the interesting thing because we always say if it's not easy to use then you won't use it. But in the case of this uh, tangential barrel um, machining, um, you pick the face, you pick the tool, you calculate. Everything is taken care of. It really is super easy to machine this and there's no, in fact it's probably easier than cutting a 2D or a 3 axis uh, surface. So I don't need to be an advanced user? Absolutely not. Once you get over the certain process of how you, you use, utilize this tooling, uh, the step over the quality you need, um, it really is a simple um, process of um, getting the result that you need. The helical drilling fascinates me. Yeah, certainly it's, uh, it's a nice process for punching a hole in, into material. The interesting um, net result from this type of strategy is the more difficult the material, the bigger the benefits you'll see. So if you're starting to machine things like titaniums or inclinals, then you can really utilize this tooling and, and punch big holes into, into uh, pockets very, very quickly uh, and get a good uh, performance from, it, from, from tools that really aren't even meant to be uh, center cutting. So by leaning the tool forward and spiraling into material, um, the, the, the load on the spindle is, is much reduced and you can push it a little bit harder. How about my tool life? It absolutely increased because it's um, because it's because you're tipping the tool forward. You're cutting on the um, on the front end of the front end of the tool, and it's a very similar. If you've ever inclined a tool forward uh, and tried to machine a, a, a flat face, you get a, a much nicer um, surface quality because the back end of the tool is not touching material, mm -hmm. and so better surface quality, better surface uh, tool life. And it's a similar argument for process reliability, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you can see the part behind me is it's sticking a long way out of the vise. It's a you know, nice, nice lang, lang vise system. Um, but would you really want to be punching a hole on the end of this part with, a, say, an 80 or 100 mil U-drill? This process is, is safe. You can utilize it from holes from, let's say, one and a half times diameter of that tool or up to how big a hole you want to, to machine. So if, if, it, if I was machining and I wanted to uh, machine a 100 mil hole, I wouldn't be putting a U-drill on this type of setup. So you've got thousands of hypermill users in the UK, can anyone adopt this technology? Absolutely, as long as you have a, a five axis machine, it doesn't matter if it's very dynamic, like uh, this Hermley C42 behind me, or let's say a little bit non-dynamic, non a big, uh, say, gantry style machine. Um, this process is good for um, both types of machines.